Hi there, we're going to work through another letter of the alphabet. Uh, this time we're going to do P is for patience. That's right, you heard it here first, folks. P is for patience. I'm also going to make a disclaimer. Please do not use me as an exemplar of P is for patience. So, um, now, how much patience you will require will depend on where you are in your stroke journey. Are you, because keep in mind, you need to go back to the F is for frustration video. You are going to find, depending where you are post stroke, depends on how much patience you're going to need to practice or exert. Now, along with P is for patience, I might later on do P is for pacing or we can just roll them in together. So what do I mean by patience? Well, one, in the first week or so after your stroke, you are going to have to lay low. You are going to have to find some quiet time. Ooh, he was for quiet. Um, so that being said, you're going to have to be patient with yourself. I know it's frustrating um, and I can only imagine the level of frustration those will experience if you have to be in a rehabilitation or recovery facility for weeks or months after your stroke. I can only imagine how much patience it will require to be in a hospital uh, longer um, than four or five days. I, I lucked out. I was only there for three days. So there will be times where you're not going to be that patient, and I mean with yourself. Uh, patience for other people we'll get to in a minute or two. If I remember, bear in mind, I had a stroke. So you've got to be patient with yourself. I am still learning that. So again, I'm not an exemplar of what patience would look like. Let's just make that completely clear. Um, now, what do I mean by patient? Well, one, you have to bear in mind, you are not the same person, right? Uh, that you were before your stroke. Now, I'm not mean, I, I don't even mean on drastic levels. I mean on some of the simplest things like communication. The, the first week, well, immediately after my stroke, the first four or five days, me wanting to talk to anyone was just a nightmare. Uh, I had mainly decent interactions with people. I did happen to have a few people that were um, difficult, if not asshatish. Douche canoes. Twat waffles. Yes. Complete shit balls. Um... So, then you have patience with other things. Uh, I, the day after I got out of the hospital, I was at home and went to Walmart. Not the best idea. No, not the best idea. Should have stayed home. I just wanted to go price shop TVs. That's all I really wanted to do. Note to self, should have stayed home. Um, you also need to consider things such as, uh, and some of this sounds very simplistic, but it, it's very true. You, you need to consider other things such as, um, you know, uh, being patient in allowing people to do things for you, uh, especially things that would normally come readily available or, or easily like making toast uh chopping vegetables like some of the just the the literally inane things that you would do just in your day in day out uh putting away your laundry folding laundry right um so and i'm still learning this to give yourself a break you need to be patient with yourself uh, you've had a 
life-altering event that is permanent, right? So there's going to be a bit of disbelief or denial in regards to what you're going through, and you might try to push yourself just a little bit too much. Well, I'm going to suggest pushing yourself too much is a bad thing. Um, and then you have to remember, you may not observe the gains you're making. I had to have this conversation with my physiotherapist because uh, I, I felt like I wasn't making any gains at all. And she was kind enough to sit down and explain to me, you know, and show me my chart of what I couldn't do or was able to do weeks ago versus what I cannot do and what I'm able to do today. Uh, culminating in this week doing six stories of hospital stairs uh, up and down and my times are getting drastically better. Um, and this is my, my goal to be able to do stairs. <coughs> and I have one rule no no uh holding the rail she has a rule no falling that's because she's selfish and doesn't want to do the paperwork um i'm okay with falling i'm in a, already in a hospital what could conceivably go wrong um you've got to be able to give yourself permission to be lazy i guess that's the only way to put it uh you know you're gonna have to be patient with what you're able to do and i realize that may or may not be an easy thing to do. I realize that that may or may not be what you want to do. Unfortunately, and I'm learning to come to grips with this, it's what you need to do, right? There's just, there's just no way around it. You've got to be able to tell yourself it is okay to put your head down, just to go, go slow and low, right? Um, it is okay to tell yourself that you're going to take the path of the rabbit, not no, I'm going to take the path of the turtle, right? So, or tortoise and hare, right? So you are going to be the turtle or the tortoise, um, you know, uh, because this is, it's not a slow, it's, it's, as much as you don't want this to be a slow adventure, it's unfortunately going to have to be a very methodical and slow journey, right? Um, I'd like to say sit back and enjoy the ride, but some days are completely unenjoyable. Now, you've also got to give yourself the time to be patient about goal setting and what those goals will look like and how they progress to either successful completion of that goal or a revaluation re of the goal and determining how you can get to where you want to be, where you need to be, right? And in some cases, where you would like to be and where you're going to end up there's going to be a gap, right? So, and I really don't know how to accept that yet myself. And I'm, I'm going to be honest about that. I don't know where I will end up uh, in that journey, right? That's just not something I'm completely aware of yet. So, exactly how you will learn to be patient, right? Uh, for example, today uh, I tried to do an activity that historically I would normally do for hours and hours and hours, uh, miniature figure painting. Um, normally I could sit down for hours and just paint figures. Uh, I have gone very slowly at it, been doing it for about two and a half-ish hours, and I know my brain is telling me you're done for now. Um, have I gotten done Historically, what I could do, no, not even close. But that's okay. Hence the video, P is for patience. So, and that's another thing you're going to have to learn to accept is if you go and see the video on sensory overload, um, you're going to have to learn to take breaks, right? Unfortunately, painting miniatures is more brain work However, it's great for me because I'm dominant right hand, so it's helping me get dexterity back. It's actually been fairly successful. Um, 
so that being said, I uh, really don't know how long it'll take to paint these figures. There aren't that many of them, you know, uh, but it'll come in time. That much I know. Uh, what does that time look like? I have no idea. Not a clue. So I'm just hoping it is something I can work at. And, you know, I've learned to accept the fact that as I'm doing certain things, I've my brain just says, hey, you need to take a break and you're pretty much done now. Now, for those around stroke folk, um, you're going to have to exercise a little bit of patience as well. Uh, because they are going to have to lean on you in ways that almost seem juvenile. You know, hey, you know what? I, I can't do this today. Can here's my bank card. Can you go and do my groceries for me? Right? Um, here's a list. Here's my pin. Or here's some money. Please, I just not able to do that. Um, you know, there are going to be times where uh, you have plans to do things, and it's just not going to happen, or not going to happen in the way uh, or manner in which you intended it to happen. Uh, there are going to be no reliable predictors of what one day will look like versus any other day. So just keep that in mind. When you are helping to support someone who's had a stroke uh, during their recovery journey, you, you as well, friends, family members, what have you, you're going to have to, at times practice patience and that's simply because the reality of the matter is the person's had a stroke and even they don't know what they don't know because strokes are messy um, but what they also don't know is what any given day is going to look like right? uh, I can be fine get me out under fluorescent lighting in a high noise environment I don't know if I'm going to last 20 minutes or three hours, or somewhere in between. Um, I still don't know at times um, how I'm able to deal with uh, ambient noise. I still don't know at times uh, what bending over will look like. Because I, right now, when I start to bend over completely, I end up having uh, significant difficulty. Uh, with headaches and vertigo and balance. Right. Um, you know, so basically P is for patience. Now with that comes pacing. Um, and it's not to make another P video because I realized I duplicated you today. You was previously for uncertainty uh, as of today, but yet before that it was also for understanding. Okay. Uh, sorry. For those that are having aphasia and speech and language difficulties, didn't mean to duplicate so soon. My bad. So, pacing comes with patience, right? So, you're going to have to learn to pace yourself. And again, I'm not any exemplar for that. Um, having naively expected I might be able to go back to work sooner than the doctors thought. Well, what do they know? They're just doctors, right? So I thought I would be able to go back sooner. Um, no, not going to happen. So you're going to have to learn to pace yourself. And I'm going to be honest about this. You're going to have to accept the fact, much like when I did the video, you is for uncertainty. You're going to have to accept the fact there might not be definitive timelines. So if you're someone who's used to planning and something should take this long, right? Or, you know, I, I, it, I figure I can do that in two days or, you know, I'm going to set a goal and it'll take me three weeks to get there. And, and you've sort of plotted this out, like what it's going to take me to get from A to B to C. Force you with a stroke, you can't set timelines. Right? Um, simply because you don't know how long something's going to take. Right? You, you just don't. Um, let's look at this realistically. You 
set a goal, right? I want to be able to do 30 push-ups. And that's a goal I'm going to set, to be able to do 30 push-ups. Well, it's not a matter of weight training, right? Like, before my stroke, I could do 30 push-ups. That was not a problem. Now the problem is, I get to 10, maybe 12, and my head is screaming because I'm kind of inverted, and it's doing the up-down, right? So, I'm not only parallel to the ground, which my head doesn't really like, um... I can hold a plank for about a minute, two minutes in, uh, on an incline. I'm not sure how long I can hold it um, horizontal to the ground. But so it's not a matter of being physically fit and not being able to physically lift my body up, down 30 times. It's the up, down, right? Um, and my brain going, hey, shithead, I don't like that. So. Physically, yes, I can do the push-ups, right? The, the matter of just muscular, physical strength, I can, I can do the push-ups. However, due to the stroke, it doesn't like the fact that I'm trying to do the push-ups. It just, it screams at me and just does not like at all the fact what I'm trying to do. So, exactly... What will that look like post-stroke? I have no idea. I'll, I'll just be completely honest about that. I, I just don't know. Um, and how long will it take me to get to be able to do 30 push-ups? It's not like, you know, I'm going to do, do five push-ups this week, and I'm going to move that up to 10 the next week, and then for the next two weeks I'll do 10, and then I'm going to go to 15, and then the next week I'll do 20, I don't know, 20 for two weeks. It's not like I can say in six weeks I'm doing 30 push-ups regularly. That's, it's not that. It's, what is it going to take to set the goal? So you're going to have to be loose with your timelines, right? Try to schedule a goal, not so much by time, but by target, right? Um, and, and we'll get into goal setting. Uh, I'll do a video about goal setting and stroke later on. Um, because the last thing, um, about goals is, is T, time, right? Uh, I'm going to now say T could be time or target, right? Um, because sometimes time post-stroke, um, is a little bit irrelevant. It's more, what's relevant is the target, right? I've set a target. I'm going to work to the target. The time now is irrelevant. It's now getting to the target, right? And we'll cover that later uh, when I do a thing about goal setting and stroke. Uh, I'm still doing some more research on that one, and I'm slowly working on the, the video series on know your stroke, right? Um, and we're going to cover the various sides of the brain, portions of the brain, and, and what each stroke sort of looks like. So that being said, um, if you happen to be on your own stroke journey right now or supporting someone during their, ver their journey of stroke rehab and recovery, please like, share, subscribe. Share with friends, comments, right? If there's anything you want to see me cover, or anything you want to know about what a stroke is like. Um, other than a brilliant way to get the summer off, maybe Christmas too. Fuck. Um, it, strokes are fun. It, it's, it's an amazing time. Um, but anyways, please like, share, comment with your friends. And you know what? If you don't enjoy watching this, maybe you want to try watching Jim Baker in the Buckets. Yep, Jim Baker is back. He's got a new wife and he's selling a Apocalyptic buckets. A dehydrated slop. Yeah, check out Jim Baker and his buckets. It might be worth a good time. So, that being said, um, if you happen to notice either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being facial droop, uh, inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, inability to smile equally effectively or at all, slurred, stutter speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, Inability to stand unaided, general body weakness or weakness on one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple could save a life.